Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at Cameron MCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to talk to you about Jenkins and specifically how to create a little Hello World Jenkins build job. Uh, in this example, I'm not only going to print out Hello World, but I'm also just going to step you through the basic structure of a Jenkins build job so that when it comes time to create, well, complex pipelines and more complicated build jobs, you'll be prepared. So to start off with the Jenkins Hello World build job, I've got a blank, fresh Jenkins install here. You can see it says, hey, create a job. Alternatively, you can say create new item. I think it's funny it says new item. I mean, it's right up there with new thing. I just, just wanted a general name, I guess, for a build job. Um, but I click new item and I say, hey, I want to create a Jenkins Hello World application. Um, it's going to be a freestyle project. You'll notice that there's a couple of options. There's a pipeline option, a freestyle option, a few others. Generally, it's going to be between freestyle and pipeline that you usually select when you create a build job. So I'm going to create a freestyle project that provides a nice GUI tool for building your applications. Now, of course, the idea of a Hello World application is to print out Hello World, but it's also just kind of explore the tool a little bit, get a little bit familiar with it. And part of that is just looking at some of the options that are available when you create a build job. So, you know, you can discard old builds after a build is run. There's certain features that allow you to connect to GitHub here. Um, let's see, do you want to throttle builds? Let's kind of maybe limit the amount of resources that could be dedicated to a particular build. Um, execute concurrent builds if necessary of this project. So a couple of options that are available there right off the bat when you configure your Jenkins build job. And there's some source code management. Notice Git is built right into it. There's other version control tools you can use as well. And if you wanted to pull from Git, you could just put the Git URL in there. The Git URL is just a, a reference to how to locate a Git repository. So it's interesting that that's there. You can specify the Git branch as well. For this Hello World example, I'm not going to be pulling from Git, but it's worthwhile taking a look at the content that's in there. Now, when you have a build job, something needs to trigger it, right? So when do you trigger it? Do you just run it periodically? You can click on the checkbox there. And you can use the cron job syntax to specify how often the build job will run. There's one, two, three, four, five parameters. If you put an asterisk in for each of them, that means it will run every minute, which is a bit excessive. Even the tool says, hey, that's a little bit excessive. You really want to do that. But this is just a hello world example. I don't mind. If you want to know more about the cron job syntax, there's these question boxes here, and then just gives you a little bit more information. So um, what would a better cron job look like well you maybe kind of type in something like that it looks a little bit more interesting anyways if you want to learn more about the syntax the the integrated help is pretty good um so what other options there are there for trigger so trigger it remotely so this will give you a url that you can use and if you type in the url that'll trigger it and that kind of allows it to be triggered externally you can build this after another project is built um, maybe pull your source code management every once in a while. Would see if there's a change in Git or GitHub, and then do a build or even pull GitHub. So, you know, some options. When should it happen? How do you trigger it? A um, couple of settings for the build environment. So, do you have some encrypted secrets that you want to use? You want to delete the whole workspace before the build starts, just to make sure things are clean. And then I'm going to do my hello world into this build step. I'm on Windows, so I can say execute Windows batch command. If you were on Ubuntu Linux, you would say execute shell. But I'm going to execute a Windows batch command. I'm just going to say echo hello world. And that basically allows you to just type in commands here. So echo is a basic Windows DOS command. It also works on Linux as well. Um, but, you know, if you actually wanted to build something, you could type in, you know, maven uh, compile test um, package or something. And if you had a Java application and maven was installed, well, then that would cause your Java program that may have been pulled down from Git to be compiled. We're not going to do that. We're just going to focus on the hello world right now. But that's interesting. And then finally, and so you can add multiple build steps here. So invoke ant, invoke gradle, invoke maven, all sorts of different build tools you can invoke here. And if you have some special build tool, there's usually a, a plugin you can install and more options will appear here depending on how many different plugins you install in Jenkins. 
Now there's also some post build action. So what do you want to do after the build happens? Well, maybe there's another project you want to build that depends on this. So that's an option. Archive the artifacts. So like take the different jar files and war files that are created and you know save them somewhere else so that you can reference them later. Maybe send out an email saying that the build was successful. So what are the post build actions that you want to do? I'm not going to set any of them here, but um, interesting that those options are available. And then I'm just going to click apply and then save. So that creates the basic hello world build job. Now you can see over here on the breadcrumb trail, I'm inside, I guess you could say my build job and I can click build now. So I click build now and then the build's going to run. This shouldn't take too long because well, all I really do is print out hello world and you can see over here that the build job, the output of the build job is printed. It looks like I clicked on that twice. So I actually got two build jobs. Hey, I'll click on it a third time and watch it run for the third time as well. Now you notice that a successful Jenkins build is blue. That's because the person who invented uh, Jenkins, uh, I can't pronounce his name. Uh, he's from Japan. Apparently in Japan, blue and green aren't differentiated that much. There's a neat article on the server side about that. Um, anyways, and I can click on one of these builds here and notice one of the options when you get into the build. So notice that dashboard takes me back to the landing page. This is my build job. I'm in the third run of the build job. And now I can look at the console output for the build job. And you can see right there, it says, hey, hello world. And there you go. That's a, a successful Jenkins hello world build job. Um, all pretty straightforward there. And as I said, as you go into Jenkins, you can go into manage Jenkins, you get these manage plugin tools and you can install all sorts of crazy plugins. I mean, if you want to have green balls instead of blue balls, you can always install a, a plugin like that. And so the more plugins that you install, the uh, more functionality you get with your tool. But fundamentally, that's how a little Jenkins Hello World build job works. And there you go, that's how easy it is to create a little Hello World example in Jenkins. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. We've got lots of great tutorials on Jenkins, DevOps, enterprise software development in general. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on the YouTube.